Wendy, thank you very much. Nice to see you again. Middle East Institute, thanks a lot. Gene, here we are again. Travis, nice to meet you. And a big thanks to IRD for the terrific work that they've been doing in Libya with us. Um, they were one of the first organizations on the ground after the crisis began. The good news, and it is good news, is that there really has not been and is not today a humanitarian crisis in Libya. There could have been, but there isn't. And it's important to give full credit where credit is due, and that's to the Libyans. Local city councils, community leaders, religious leaders, and members of what we hope are the first signs of a vibrant civil society in the country in Misrata and Benghazi and other places coordinated and delivered humanitarian assistance themselves saving lives in difficult and very dangerous conditions. They took care of public safety. They even picked up the garbage when municipal services in parts of the country had stopped. This has really been their achievement, as Ambassador Kretz was, was underlining, that we, the international community, the international organizations, the NGOs, the donors, have admired and contributed to. Now, the United States has been on the ground monitoring the humanitarian situation from the beginning. In March, in early March, we sent teams to both sides of the country, in Egypt and in Tunisia, to keep an eye on things. And then when the situation, security-wise, improved enough, we dispatched a disaster assistance response team, a DART, um, into Benghazi. Um, and they're still there. Uh, given the heavy fighting um, over the past months, as you probably have read, medical needs have been paramount. Um, we've supported health facilities in Libya with medical supplies, with doctors and nurses, many of whom left um, being third country nationals, distributing food and blankets and other emergency goods. We've worked with a number of UN organizations who, who were there. The, the World Health Organization, for one, provided medical training and kept an eye on the possibility of epidemic-prone diseases so that we could react quickly if we saw signs of that. We provided more than $15 million in food assistance through the, through the World Food Program to pre-position food in the country and near the country in the event um, that vulnerable populations ran out of food. Um, we, inside the country, when the situation stabilized enough that NGOs were able to get in there and start working, we were faced with getting humanitarian assistance, pr principally, again, medical help, to those that needed it in the midst of armed conflict. And, and this, was a, this was a period um, that I won't soon forget. Uh, we didn't wait for the crisis to subside. Instead, we worked with a number of heroic NGOs, and I, and I don't use that word very often, heroic. Heroic NGOs who ensured that assistance, particularly medical assistance, was getting into the cities that you were all reading about that were under bombardment while that bombardment was continuing. They were waiting for windows of opportunity to get in and resupply clinics that were still ministering to the wounded, bringing medical personnel, bringing uh, uh, emergency health kits to places like Ajdabeya, to Misrata, um, to Brega, even as the fighting continued. We played a big role in supporting the evacuation and repatriation of refugees moving out of the country, especially migrant workers who were, who were fleeing at the beginning of the crisis. With our support, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees and the International Office for Migration set up a humanitarian airlift to evacuate and repatriate thousands of people who'd fled. More than 600,000 people left and we, we were able to help, with our assistance, almost 300,000 people get home from Tunisia, Egypt, and Niger. We were particularly pleased with the help we got from the U.S. military to airlift over 1,000 um, Egyptians from Tunisia back, back to Egypt. We've also been helping more recently um, remove landmines and some of the other unexploded ordnance. 
now that the international community has access to all of the country, um, to the West as well, we can see the humanitarian and have seen the humanitarian challenges in Tripoli that some of you have heard about and other towns in the West. But I can tell you that the situation is improving. Access to running water is coming back to Tripoli. Food is reaching the areas of need. And international NGOs and international uh, organizations are now in Tripoli able to keep an eye on things. If problems develop, they're going to be there to lend a hand to the extent that the transitional authorities need help. What's really important, and, and Ambassador Kretz talked about this, and you can't stress it enough, is how terrific it is to have this Libyan counterpart taking the lead, and that's the TNC. It's coordinating its efforts better every day with the international community. And, and just one example I'll give you. We were very concerned in the last week about drinking water in Tripoli. And it was the TNC and their stabilization planning team, which Gene talked about, this planning that had been done, that saw this problem coming, reacted quickly, sent engineers um, that they had access to, um, frankly, into harm's way in the south to get those pumps turned on again. It was their work, and we've supported it as best we can, but, but quite impressive. We are still engaged. Um, when Tripoli fell to the opposition forces, um, USAID again moved in, particularly with, with medical help um, because of, of the potential for, um, um, for medical needs um, to deal with critical trauma care. Last week, we sent two more of these enormous health kits that we've sent into the country. This, uh, we'd already sent 10. This, we sent two more. Each one of these health kits um, can sustain 10,000 people for three months at a clinic. So these, these are big, and they're very helpful in a situation where clinics who have, may have been cut off from their supply line still need to um, minister to patients that are coming in. As Ambassador Kretz said, our role and the role of the entire international community is very much changing now from a humanitarian period where we were watching the humanitarian situation, plugging gaps where we, where we saw it, to one of transition towards stabilization. In this phase, we're committing additional resources um, through the Office of Transition Initiatives to help build that, civics, that civil society, to help build some press institutions, and to help provide some expertise to the TNC that it identifies that it needs now going forward towards the democratic process and other um, reforms that, that, that are coming down the road. Uh, we're, we're providing training for representatives of emerging civil society organizations. It really was remarkable to see that in the midst of, over the last five or six months, civil society organizations sprouting all over the country. Um, we're now trying to go in and, and help them understand you know, how you run an NGO, um, how to organize themselves, how to be able to um, uh, reach out to the communities in which they're trying to work better. It's also very important to the TNC. They have identified a very big priority is how to reach out and how to deal better with the press. And they've asked us that through this, this program that we're launching um, to spend a lot of time training local media and training local councils and municipal leaders, the Libyan leadership, how to deal with the press. Um, they really want to break down bars and, and barriers that have been there before because they, they are so keen on making their um, governance going forward accountable and they see a role for the press there to help get messages out and to help hold them accountable. And we, we think that's pretty exciting. We're also helping them identify, as I said, gaps in their own expertise in areas like transitional justice, planning for elections, um, in, in, in messaging, as I said, outreach, dealing with the press, where they don't have a lot of expertise and they see capacity in the United States and other parts of the international community to help them with experts that can go in for a while and help them out until they um, can, can cover these uh, uh, needs on their own. So let me just close by the same point I made at the beginning, and that's paying tribute to the, Li to the Libyans. Um, I was in Paris last week, too. Jean got to go to the fancy meeting on Thursday. Um, I, I, I stay behind for the working level meetings the day after. And we had a, a, a great meeting on Friday, the, the first what you could call donor conference for Libya. It was a small group, met with uh, Dr. Ahmed Jahani, 
who's leading the reconstruction effort um, for the TNC. And he began the meeting by thanking the international community, number one, for freeing up the assets 